video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can convert an HTML template into a React application. So I have this website here. It's uh, built in HTML, so index.html. And if you go to about, it refreshes the page. If your service refreshes the page, uh, there's a fair amount of animation going on at this template. And we will make it work on React application. So for a demo, I currently have the React application up here on port 3000. And if I refresh here, I can see it will load like this, but if I change the pages, if I go to about, you see there is no page refresh. So if I go to service, and if I go to contact, it all without refresh. So we are using React Router here, it's for our routes. So if I go to home page, scroll down, you will see the, the animations and everything is working just fine and the way it was working in HTML. So I also provided you the HTML file as well as the React uh, project files so that you can see or make changes according to your needs. So without further ado, let's get started. I have the project files, so here is the folder, so you can see all the things are here and the index files are here. Alright, so what do we need to do? Yeah, we need to open uh, the website, so if we go to Google, alright, so it's going to take you here, and here when you reach, uh, click on get started, here you can see that there are a few commands given. Now, this command runs with npx, so we need node installed. So if you go to, so here, uh, this is node.js, you need to install in your system. If you won't have the node installed, the commands won't work. So make sure you have it installed. So, so what do we need to do now? First of all, I'm going to open the uh, bash here, shell, Windows shell. So here we need to navigate to the desktop. So I go to CV desktop, and here we can create folder or what we can do we can create an app straight away so what I do I create a copy this command and I go back to my shell paste there now our app uh, we can call it socks dash blog dash app all right that's it. it's asking here okay proceed yes once it is complete application is installed you can see here and we start to start the development server if you want to bundle and put the application to uh, production you can use npm run build and now it is suggesting us first we need to go inside the folder and then we need to run it straight and we can't run straight away so what i'm going to do i'm going to just kind of copy this and go inside the folder now i'm inside the folder so i can run the npm start so i simply i can copy this and paste here and i run npm start whenever it's going to be on localhost 3000 so our application will come here currently it's a site is can't be reached because it's still loading and you can see starting to open server, so it should be fine now, yeah. Our folder of project is right here. So I want to open it in our Visual Studio code so that we can code there. So I open it here and drag and drop the folder. Now you can see we have these files here. So basically if we break the structure, I'm going to close everything. So we have basically three folders, node modules, where we have all these softwares uh, those are required to run the applications. Those are going to go here, all the libraries. Then we have public folder. Here we are going to put the assets of our applications, all the CSS and JS files going to go here. Source for folder is the one where we are going to create our application files. And so far, if you want to see what packages we have installed, we can need, we need to go in package.json. Here we can see uh, the app name, app version we provided. We have uh, some commands like npm start if you remember uh, the one we used to start this what it does it runs, runs the npm scripts and then npm scripts for the run start to run the application now this is because we have the dependencies here and here we are installing the react version 18.2 react dom react scripts and web vitals so these are the packages currently installed in our all right so what we need to do is let's see how it is working so that we can put our uh, HTML project into this app. So currently this is generating from this public folder. There is a file named index.html and there is a div with the ID of root. So here this ID is everything is getting mounted here. Why? Because React works that way. So if you want to see where it is configured, router, our application is running now, so we started guide. So we're going to use the outlet and what outlet is I will show you yeah, it might sound a bit uh, complicated at first, but it is going to be quite easy once you see how it works. So basically, we put uh, an outlet component and like this. And what is going to happen if you create 
multiple files and those files will render in place of this applet. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is let me show you step by step so we see how it works. So here currently we have this Ox app, which is coming from, and here there's so many things going on and we need to clear this structure as well. So what I do, I close the package.json. Here we have the app.css. We don't need it. We can't even, we don't need the test file. We can, we can delete this too. So now you can see that we are left with only two files here and uh, we have no style, nothing. It's just it's Ox app. And we have only index.js and app.js. All right, so what are we gonna do is gonna go inside the, you know, first of all, in the app.js. And here, I'm going to create, and I'm gonna remove the header. I'm gonna create here a component, and I'm gonna call it header. All right, so there's gonna be a component named header, then there's going to be an outlet, all right? And it's going to be up like this. And when I do this uh, here, uh, you can see that we imported it on top. So you may need to make sure that it's imported on top. Now we can make it like this. And as well as here as well. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to pass here a footer. Just the same way. All right. So if you go to the browser, I have the index.html file here. We have a header here at top. Uh, navigation is going to be there as well as we have footer, which is going to be common. So if I scroll down, so there is the footer. So the same way, and if I give it to the about page, we have similar header on top, and then we have footer. You can see that the middle middle content is going to change. So if I go to service, header is quite similar. The, the middle content is changing based on the page, and the footer is the same. And then we go contact, header is quite the same. We have form in the middle and the footer is the same. So that's how it works. So basically we are saying here header and we are gonna render a outlet based on each page and then we have footer. So these are quite common. Now we are getting the header here. These are not defined, so we need to define these pages. So what I'm gonna do in source directory, I'm gonna create two directories. First going to be pages and there are going to be another directory which is I'm gonna call components. All right, so any part of an application when we create, we create a component, and when we create a page, we create a header. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I wanna create a header, and header is gonna be inside a component. So you're gonna call header .jsx, and let me say react functional component, and when I say this, So we need to install the package. So I don't have install here. So what I do, I go here in the library. Here we're gonna say React. Oh, no, I think this is the one. So you install it. React Redux GraphQL. Now I'm gonna close this. Go back here. Run as C. You can see now we get an option of creating components. So when I hit enter, it gives the default uh, boilerplate for it. So that's what we need. So here, what we're we gonna say like for now, we're just gonna call uh, header. So there's a text header, nothing more. And the same way, we're gonna call for dot tsx yeah, functional component. And here, you can put footer. Just for now, just for starting out, just put it like that. All right, header, footer, and we're calling them here. So we need to import them. So it's gonna be import header and you can see it is suggesting us so you can click on that or hit enter and it's going to import let's say import footer it imports that too by doing this we should have the header footer header and we have an header so we have a header footer right there but we don't have outlet working at this point so what do we want to do now we need to work with the react router down to make our uh, outlet work and for that what are we going to do we're going to go to index.js and here i'm going to uh, create a router so basically how it works we need to use uh, instead of app i'm going to pass i'm going to remove it and bear with me in this case i will show you how it works for net you know if our app is getting here currently i removed it i'm going to pass here uh, router and there is the router provider and that's what we need. So I close the router provider and I'm going to close it like 
this and router provider will require router so what router is i'll show you in a moment so it's going to be router equals and we are passing a router so i say router like that all right but now we need to define it we don't have it so here what i'm going to do on the top i'm going to say a constant which is going to be a router and this constant what it is going to do because we need to link our app.js so that's going to be here so what are we going to say here we say whenever we go to a path and path is by default this use the element and that element is the app the one we have and we want to load right the one where we have our outlet so use this one all right then we put comma and here we say all right so whenever i want to go to for example to a cloud page or service page so those are going to be the children pages so what i'm going to do i'm going to say here children all right and then we're going to create an array and you're going to pass here further path so here i can say path so i'm going to define three paths for now i'll say here first the slash and here we're going to tell which component should render so app will render on this path right but the app will render header and footer, but there should be something inside it, right? In between both header and footer. So that we need to define right here. So we say element, and that element going to be, and this time we're gonna say here, home page, or you can call anything. It's, it's, it's just we are creating, going to create this component and going to pass it there. All right, so, and now we're getting this header because we need to pass an array of objects. So it's gonna be like this, okay? Now here, like that and after this object we can put a comma and after that we can copy this so i put another and here i'm gonna say uh, let's say about so if someone goes to about page use this component we don't have these components we're gonna create these but i'm just adding let's add all for so we have service we have project so we can add those two so the right so here it's gonna be lower t so these are the uh routes we created and we pass these to router and the router is binding these to our router provider which is provided by react dom all right so far so good now we need to add these pages we don't have these pages currently so we go here and one by one we create these so first of all is home page dot gsx react functional component put it there and then pass just like that here home page all right save it then it needs to be the other one which is it right about and service okay so let's create it straight away and we're going to focus on the main files which is index here we need to import these so i'm going to say here import this time it's going to be tame import as tame say project all right so now you can see that adders are gone now if i go back to our application we can inspect and go to console here we have some matters going on in router we need to say create this is a function from react router dom and we need to pass an array and then this object goes inside that array all right, so I'm gonna close it. And fine, and this create uh, browser router should be included. Now we don't have any header. And if you see here, we don't have any header here. Now you see here, we have header, footer, and then home page. Now if I go to slash about, you pick a header, about, footer. Now we go to contact, you get header, contact, footer. So now you know. The main setup of our application is complete. Now we need to include uh, the theme inside it, the template inside it. So let's do that. So what I do for now, I'm gonna close this source folder. I'm gonna go inside public folder. Inside this public folder, we can create a directory and put files there. But what I'm gonna do is gonna put straight away. So I say here in VLM Explorer, and this is gonna give me the folder for it. So this is the folder. All right, now, now I'm going to go to our project, uh, let's see what it is, 
It's right here. So here we need CSS folder, images, JS, library, and a CSS files. So I'm going to copy all these files. I'm going to go inside here, public, and I'm going to paste here everything. So we will be able to access these files. Okay, files are copied there. Now what we can do, we can open, so I close this, and I close this folder, go back to the visual code. Now we should have all the files here. Now what do we want to do? We want to work with the first home page. So I'm going to close everything else. And we're just going to keep our home page at first. We go back to browser. There we go to home page. All right, so add our home page footer. Now here, we need to put some content. So let's me, let me open the sublime text here. I go to the index.html. And here, if you notice, we have the HTML tags, everything. So we have the title and all the links, probable fonts, icons are included on top here. So if you're converting a HTML template, you need to include these. So to include these, you need to work with the HTML dot index.html file. Now, in our, in our case, we have some content already here. So what we can do, we can remove this and put our content there. All you need to care about is that this div stays there. So what I do, I'm going to go here, till body, and I'm going to copy everything from the top of it. I'm going to go here, uh, into the Visual Studio, Studio Code, to the body start. We can put everything here. So you can see everything is pasted there. Now here we are saying a lib, and then it is going inside it and it is going to get the directory path directly to the public folder and that's why it works so that's going to be all right so what i'm going to do here and here i'm going to close this div now we have at the bottom some content going to appear so we're going to uh, copy this go to the body close paste it there again all the files are here so these files will be available inside uh, the public folder for our react application so i can save that now, if you see here, there's this div, which is responsible for index.html. So what we can do, we can copy this from here, go back to our application. Here inside, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to paste the empty box here like this, because in React, you cannot put, uh, like for example, this div, then you cannot put another, another div here. So if, I, if you see your div, it's going to give you the header. So you can read, read that this is not proper JSX. JSX expression must have one parent. So for that, you need to wrap everything inside MD. Or you can use Fragment. And I'm going to from, from React. You can either use Fragment or you can use MD like this. So I'm going to use MD this time. And I'm going to put everything inside it. Now we need to correct things here according to React because we cannot use HTML uh, things in React. So here, if you see, you can see there are so many rents here. So start from top, here we're going to be saying we need to remove these comments first of all. So remove the comments and this comment. So the easy way to do is just look for this inside your file. So you can see 21 places this. So here we can I remove it from here. Then go down. Here it is again. Go down. Remove it again. Go down. So we need to keep on doing because these uh, this is not recognized by React and it's going to break our application. So again, again, almost there. Testimonial. Then there's theme and footer section, and then that's it. Now there is no more. So yeah, we just made it. Save it. Now we need to change the class. Uh, we cannot have class here like this. In React, you use class as class name. So you can search for it. You can see how many times it is. We can't change one by one. So I say here, use to find the class and change it with class name. That's what we want. And when you see here, it says replace. And here it says replace all. So I say replace all. And you can see it replaced everywhere. So we see everywhere it is class name. Other thing we need to check is the image and input tags. These should be closed. So at the end of these, now, so what I'm going to do basically, again, we're going to search. So here I'm going to say image. And here you can search for this portion, alt. 
And what do you want to pause here? You need to close it basically. So you can just close it like this. Like 10 places it is. And you can see that error is gone. I remove this. Now we need to look for input. Because if you have these here, it's going to give you the error. Not going to work. So we have some inputs here. We also have some images still. Now we ain't sending in the whole image. So well, first I'm going to fix that. Put it here like this. And then replace it with closing. Six places. All that is gone. Now we have input here. I think it's one only. So I put it like that. Then we search for input. I got two. One is fixed, one to go. Here. Another thing we need to fix is the style. So let's see how many times we have style on this page, six times. So let's fix that. So here we have the style. So what do you do basically? When you pass style something like this, use a style. And then you pass height. And then you say height like 48 pixel, right? Yeah. You can remove this height uh, style. So that is recognized by React. So there shouldn't be any problem. Let's see if the other style is similar or not. It's okay, not. And here, we can break it down. And here, we need to pass height and width. So we pass here width 3 rem, comma, height 3 rem. Now we can remove this. Take it up. Look for other style. Okay, here we have it. I'm gonna paste it like that and remove this one. This is the height only, so it's okay. So hey, height 48 pixel. So another one, another one. Look at this other one. Need to close it as well. So this one has the height and width both videos are on. Same one, so 65 pixel. 65 pixel. Now you remove it. And I think it's the same everywhere. So it's like this. So what I want to do, I want to copy this. Search, replace with uh, what we have here. So this one is closing as well. So I'm just going to copy this. Make sure it is ending. Yeah, slice. You can see that. Matter is gone. It closed as well. So yeah. I'm going to Double check it if everything is alright. So style was six places and everywhere it is corrected. Yeah. Save it. Okay, we still have red here. It says Mitch. Close it. We have red here. And this is the this is a template issue. Actually it's close. I don't see anything red here, so it should be all right. Now if we go to the browser and refresh, you can see the style already changed. Now we have the, you can see here, uh, loading coming up. So first thing first, what we need to do, we need to load our JS properly. Currently it is, uh, when we work with a React application, this file is going to load first, and then the React file is going to load. So we need to make sure this loads once the DOM is ready. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put here a uh, timeout. So I'm going to say set timeout function. I'm going to pass here a time of, let's say, um, uh, one and a half minute. I'm going to, uh, second, sorry. And I'm going to cut everything from here. You can see that everything is gone. Now here inside this, I'm going to put it. All right, now if I go to here, you can see that down it goes there the spinner works and it can goes and just works uh, as expected now we have our header text showing up on top which is not looking that great so we need to work on that so for header what do we need to do we can put the spinner uh, let me show you first so what i do I go to index uh, home page on top and we have the spinner and this, this is a spinner, which is the loading that you see initially. So when I refresh, you'll see that the blink, this one, this is the spinner. So what we can do, we can take this to header. 
because it's going to go in every page. And also we can take out this data because it's going to wrap every component, every page. So what I'm going to do, we're going to just uh, take it. So because if we go to, let's say, so mine here, it's, it's the Rizzy White P0. If I go to contact, you will see the same class and same div right there. And if I open it, you will see that spinner start and spinner in here. So if I go to a log page, you will see the same class, speed, same spinner. So it's every on every page. So what we can do, we can extract it to a same separate component and take it out. Here we go in components header. And here I'm going to actually what I'm gonna do is uh Word it. I'll just take the spinner root, put inside header like this. Now, what we can do is we, uh, as we are wrapping everything inside HTML index.html file, we can put our common div there instead of putting it uh, in the components. So here I go. I pick it and I go to index.html. Here we have our our old comment, our div, which is here, because everything needs to render here, so we can wrap this div to this. Okay, if I didn't paste it like that, all right, save it. Better. Save this. Now I want to make the formatting white. So what we can do, we can use extension. I go to extensions here. We remove the React and we search for pretty, prettier. Okay, it's pretty, prettier code. Install this extension. What we need to do now. Go to these settings. There we need to go formatting under text editor. And here we have uh, format on type. I said format on save. Now we need to search here default format. There is default formatter. Look for prettier. Now it should do the thing. So I'm going to close this, close settings. Let's try it again. Actually, this file has errors, so it's not formatting. So save here. It gives us render here at the bottom. Now, if I go to header, here you can see the format is not right. If I save it, you can see it saves. Now, if, uh, you know, we can format all our all of our files on save now. It's going to format them properly. So that's how you format, which is going to be quite helpful. Now we need to check what errors we still have in this file. So. Okay, at the bottom we have a div, and okay, we removed the starting div from there, but we did not remove the ending div, so this has to go. Now, code should be, yeah, now you can see this formatted just right, so this file also worked. So if we see here, um, yeah, we have the tick here, so it's working. Go to terminal, it'll work, work fine there too, so far so good, so we are here. And okay, or we need to restart the server, so we'd say npm run start again. So here, npm start. Sorry, Now this looks a lot better. So we have our spinner coming up and everything. And in our console, we don't have any error. So that's good. Now let's work. If we go to about or anywhere, it's going to go to about HTML and I'm going to break. So we need to correct that. So first of all, what I want to do is I'm going to go to, are we going to break everything from the index, uh, pay index uh, homepage, sorry. So when I do, I'm going to scroll and I'm going to go on top. So we have a navigation here, right here. So if you remember, in initially, 
and in next.js we mentioned all our routes so if we go to this route or this this route or this we can use these routes we can call these routes in our navigation and as navigation need to be on every page like on the here so if we go to html we can see that in project page about page service page everywhere it is so we can have it in a separate component so we can go inside components and create another file and i'm going to call this file navigation so here let's create a file the name of navigation dot tsx react functional component and here what we're going to do we're going to take out the navigation from here so i'm going to cut it and i'm going to paste right here the whole navigation so no error so far but we know i have a navigation here so i'm going to call navigation right here all right and also you need to call the uh header All right, so we have header and navigation both showing up right there. So, oh, yeah, we need to import the header. So then it's just next to the same file. All right, this should fix. And refresh. Now our spinner is keep on sticking there. So first we need to remove it from here. So if we go to the sublime, our spinner is in the main div. It's not inside the position relative. So we have it here, which is not right. So we cut it from here, paste it here. Then this comes. All right, navigation is fine. And let's save it. And this is not going to create any effect, I think. We need to do so. If I go to the code here, uh, we have the spinner coming from header. And you can see that the ID of spinner, the cell is here. And the code which is responsible for hiding the spinner is here. So this is a jQuery code, and we are mounting everything in, in JSX file. So what we can do, we can put convert that code into. Uh, React code. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say here import, and what we're gonna import is we're gonna import. Uh, actually, we already have a sticky button over here. We can import here. And we need to import use effect hook from React, and after that we can use it. So what we need to do, we need to say use effect, and here the dependency array. So we want to make. Uh, this hook will fire once when the component is mount, uh, mounted, so uh, if the array is empty. So uh, our code will run when header you know, need to be uh, uh, loaded. So what we need to do, we need to convert this code into uh, that code. What I'm going to do is copy this go here. And here we also need to, what again, I say here, constant, and I say spinner time out. And we can set it to set timeout. All right, and inside it, we can define everything, or whatever we want to do here. So this, basically, we need this portion. Now we need to define it in JavaScript instead of jQuery. So here, the code is in jQuery. We can write it to JavaScript. So here, I say another constant, and that's going to be spinner. Uh, Spinner element, and then I want to say it is equal to document dot get admin by ID. I pass the ID, and ID is the spinner. All right, so we get the hold to it. We say if spinner element, then what we want to do is spinner element dot class list, and then remove. And what class we want to remove? That is show. So this class should be removed. So this jQuery code is now converted to JavaScript and we can use it inside this React component. Now here what I want to do, now we have a set timeout here so we can put a timer. So I want to put here two seconds and uh, we can put this timeout uh, in return statement so that we can clear it. And here we say clear 
Okay, here. Okay, timeout. And we need to pass the spinner timeout. Alright, this should do the trick. Now, let's save it. Why we have it twice, so uh, this spinner twice is basically here. So if I go to the um, header, so we included our spinner here, right? And then if we go to our uh, app.js, if you remember, we added header here. So it is by default now already added. And then I added it here as well. So that is causing issues. We don't need to include header here. So if I remove this, and then uh, by default, because every page is going to render here in the place of outlet, just so our header should be there once. So if I go here, you can see the loader is gone, but I need to refresh the page to see. And you can see the loader is there, and then it goes away. So that thing is fixed now. Now, the, another thing I want to do is now when I click on about, it should go to the about page in React, not HTML. So that should be working now. But uh, as we already added the use effect, so in the header, I added the use effect now to dealing with the spinner. If I go to main.js, the spinner is no longer needed. Uh, for now, I'm just going to comment it, but uh, yeah, we, we can get rid of it, so it's still working fine. Now, I don't want to work on about page, so I go to this code. Here, we already created the, so I go to source, we have our about page here, right? Now we need to put our content here, so I go back to Sublime. Here we have about page, and we want to pick everything. Uh, actually, what I do, I can pick the complete div, so... Then I go back there and I paste it. Now we need to remove a lot of stuff, so I'm gonna put empty brackets here and then put this. And I go on top first. I'm gonna make it a little big so you can see it easily. So if you remember, we have the spinner already included. We don't need to include it. Then this main div is already created, so we don't need to add it. And if you remove this div, that means you need to remove it from the bottom as well because it is closing here. So you remove this. Now we need to remove all the HTML tags. So this command is in HTML, so we need to remove it. So I'm gonna just convert this file as required here. Now I already converted one file like this before, so we will change the styles, comments, class uh, name, anything different, uh, different caps. Then I will show you. Otherwise, I'll show you in this file. And uh, after that, I'm going to add all the files just like this behind the scenes, so that you. You don't have to see me removing the comments all the time. So for now, I'm going to do this file so that at least you can see on this file. So here we have class. We're going to change it all once. Search for class. Replace it with class name. And just hit replace all. So that's done. Now the other th uh, thing we need to check is the style. So let's do that. Or image first. So here is the image. We need the closing tag. So let's search for it. So put it here. Replace it with in the closing tag. If you want to change the alt, that's really up to you. You can do that too. Now it is closed, that is gone. So remove it. Search for image again. And uh, let's see if there is any other particular image here. You can see this one also. So we can search for this. You know, I need to put it with the closing. And we can replace it three times. It is basically so. All right, image again. So far, it's like the total 30 are there. So. Yeah, here it is. And we have source about PNG. And let's see. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, well, the rest all looks good. So we have an input here. We need to change that too. So I change it to this. Or I search for that if there is any more inputs. There was only one. One input. And we changed it, so that's fine. Now let's deal with the style. So we have two places, style, so I'm going to just change it here straight away. Style, or what you can do, you can even change it straight away here, like this, and make it double code here, and close it. All right, now the style is here, so I'm going to break it. And I'm just going to change the format here, 48, double quotes, and that's it. Save the file. And we have two errors. So we go here, hotel. We have the HR, which is not ending. So we need to end it here. And save again. File formatted, everything looks full right now. So I close.
on it. Now we go back here and click of about import global route component. We need to change that. So we go to uh, navigation. Here we need to change the anchor tag with the link. So, so what I do simply, we need these class names as it is. So we first of all need to import the link. So we say here import and that's going to be link. We say it's it already imported it. We uh, just code. So we copy the link from here, go down here, and I'm going to change this to link. All right, link takes two. And to what page we want to send when we are at home, it should go to slash only. Now we need to pause the class. So cut the class from here, pause in the link. Now we need to cut the name, paste inside it. We can get rid of the anchor tag now. So this link will work just fine. Now we need the link for about page. We are left with uh, pages. So we have anchor tags here. So I just copy this and paste it here. This one is team. Team, be careful. Here we have class name drop down item, so we need to put that. Cut it, paste it there. Never. So here we copy the outside link here because the contact is outside. So if you remember here, the contact is outside. These are the drop down links. So we need to put a uh, class there. So zoom, it's a number item nav link, right? And here we say contact, and then here we say cut and paste contact. And that's it. All right, it's back. Now if we go to about, we go to about page, and uh, there you can see. So, yeah, when you get a service, the service doesn't have anything currently. So, um, now when you go to about, if you remember, like if you go here, go back. This is about component and it is taking you to, you can see here at the bottom right here, that it takes you to about HTML, service HTML, and that's happening because when we are putting the about page code, so here, if you go to about, so here we have this navigation that we need to remove. We need to call our navigation here instead of the navigation from the page. So here it's going to be navigation. All right, let's we'll fix it. So now if I go here, about, you can see it's going to come out, service, so it can go to service, yeah, it's going to service now. And then you can go to project, project. So mainly we have all the pages already there. So let's, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do service project as well as our team and testimonial pages behind the scenes. And if something that needs your attention, I will let you know. So we will do the contact page uh, in the video. Since I added all the pages, so if you go to about service, every page has its content coming up here. And if you go to contact, it's the sun just the same way. Now here, if you notice, we we are not getting the footer. So here we're getting footer, project, footer. It should be till address, starting from address. So. Our team is here, and after that, this is the address, and this is the div we need to take out. So we need to take out all this portion from here. Gonna save it. Now it will disappear from our home page. And now we need to put it inside footer. So let's look for footer file. And here, I'm gonna paste it here, actually, inside the save all right now it should be fine it should be back yeah it's back now now if you go to about page you will notice like it's coming twice because in each file it is uh, coming so we need to remove from each file so here about go to the bottom it's to the address so this day we need to get rid of it From all the files now, it's just coming from the footer components. It's it's going to look fine now. You can see, so it's just loading that. So let's see what things are left now. The first thing I'm noticing is this color. So if it should be white, it is not mixing up. 
So what we need to do is check like where are these coming from. So it is coming from here. So if I remove it, yeah, now it is mixing fine. So we need to remove this background, it's on body. So what do we get? Background color, it's gonna be white. I'll make it not important. And we need to import this one, of course. Save it, going out on JS, here we say, Import simply app dot CSS. Now let's check if this fixes it. And yes, it does. So now it's working fine now. Now let's go to home page. And let's see, let's if I go to here in HTML template and refresh, scroll down, let's see what animations are there. So this animation is here. Then we have number animation going on here. Uh, these boxes. And here are these animations, so we can click these changes. So, and there is the slider. And yeah, that's it. So let's see in our app how it works. Refresh. So, let's scroll down. Okay, this animation is working. Number animation is working. All right. I click here. All works just fine. Slider. Is working perfect our team and then the end here then go to about so about page has these all right so if I go to about okay so the things are same these animation run again and in our case if I go to service and then I go to about back Okay, it's working. Service about. Okay, this one is working. This one is not. So I need to check this one uh, where it is getting from. So we go to the code, and here is basically the file main.js that we need to check here. We can remove the spinner code. We don't need it. Oh, I leave it for you guys in case you need it. So, and then. Nav bar show. This is for navigation. This is back to top, and then this is body animation. Progress bar, which is working fine for us. And here we have the yeah, that's the counter counter up delay two thousand. We have this, and in our about page we have this. So there are two places where we have this. So what we can do, we can take it out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a separate component for it. So I go into components in here. And I'm going to create a component called counter .jsx react functional component. And here, what we want to do, we want to take the code for it. So home page, it's right here. I'm going to cut it and put it here. It's a single div, so it should be all right. All right, now I'm going to go here and import the counter. Now let's see if it is imported on top. No. So import counter. Save it. The same way now we need to import it inside about. So in about. Where we have it about the R team, here it is. So this is here, so I'm gonna move it and include the counter for counter. Save it. Now go back and see. So I go to home page. Yeah, basically now it is coming from the component instead of the uh, main component. So right, so we go to counter component. Now what do we want to do? I want to change it to uh, npm package instead of the default. So if I go here, we have the counter coming up here. We can, uh, what we can do, we can comment it for now. Then I go to in public folder there, we have index.html. There we have counter JS. We can remove this and I'm going to comment it now. Now it should not work anymore because we don't have it coming from there so it's like this 
So what are we going to do? I'm going to go back to the counter. And I want to install a package. So what I do is simply stop the server. And we need to install a counter up package. So it's npm counter up. And we need to put either i or install from counter up. Okay, now what we want to do to make this counter work because it is in React JS, yes, we need to use a different package. So uh, if I go to the package.json, we install the counter JS, which is good if you're working with any you know counter you know, generally. So if I go and search for uh, npm count counter up and you will end up coming here. So here, if I scroll down, you can see that they are saying like you include the scripts and then you need to use jQuery to make it work. Now, I want to use it with React. So what we can do, we can say here, counter up React and um, React counter count up. I think, yeah, this is the package. React count up. And you can see it's doing the same thing. So we need to use this in our case. So what I do, I copy this, go back there. And if you don't want to use uh, this package, you can remove it from your package.json. So I'm going to remove it from there. Close the file. Here, I'm going to install it. So put the command. And here, it's npm i for install. And you can screen to install it. Now let's see what else we need to do. We need to pass counter like this. So we have a simple example. You can see we have, we need to import it on top, then we need to pass the end to tell what number this should go, and it will go to that number. We have other options as well. We have duration. So you get the idea, you can put it there as well. So let's do it and uh, make our application working. It is going to be a bit different than, but the uh, end goal is to make it work. So npm start, just go to counter and import it on top. And after that, we need to import the count up like this. All right, so go to back, and here we have it. So put it here, from here, and then go to about, and go here. You can see it starts from the start. Then you go about it again, start from the start. Basically, it is on the scroll point, and you either have to make sure that this counter starts when you reach to the scrolling point or if you want to maintain it on the base of refresh you need to give it more time to kind of execute so for the duration i added 10 the delay i added 0.5 so half a second and i said redraw the true and it's just like that the same so it's, this is the same matter here so now every time it works and that's how we want it so if i go to about now it will redraw and restart everything so that's what we want now, so far, uh, these things are working fine for us. Now, let's see if any page has any issues. So, if I go to services, it looks all right. About, it all looks fine here. Project. Okay, we have some issue going on here. So, if you go to original app, project. Things are working just fine here, but not in our component. So, and other than that, if I go to our team, that's all right. Testimonials here, we also have some issues, it's not showing up. So, if we go here, testimonials, we have a slider, and then we need to check why it's not coming in our app. So, if uh, we need project testimonials. So these two things we need to correct in contact contact is working fine so all right so let's go to the project first of all so we have it loaded but it's not changing so i go to I close the counter we can close um, give it here so page package so what we need is the project all right so project is working based on a package name it's a carousel so all carousel so um, 
So it's instantiate here, but it doesn't instantiate later on. So we need to do the similar thing that we did for our counter. So what I do, because we have projects here as well as in home, we can again create a, a portion for it. We can create a separate uh, component. So let's do that, go here. And it is the project, so I'm gonna create name, the name of uh, project. And projects or .jsx. All right, create functional component. We need to save it first. Now, what I do, I extract from the main homepage. Scroll down where we have our projects. So here it is. Let's see your auto store marketing. I think that's the one. Our projects. We can search for this. We go here. Search is here. Let's see this name out. And here we can count all the projects. All right, it's from component main. Remember, we have here like this. It's better to extract your components like this to know that we have uh, this component will be working on two pages instead of one. So we get a project here now. Here you can see the project. This is our projects here. So we can run this. And we can call for projects. Close it. Save it. Now, if we go back, you should see the projects still there. Our services and our projects. Now, these projects are coming from, um, they're not working, the, but they're coming from our component. Okay, let's see what is not right. So we also have some matter here, refresh. Okay, on page refresh it works. But if you change the component, go back. And it's to go back to the main.js. And it's the old carousel. So oh yeah, this is the one we need. All right, so the process is quite straightforward again. We need to run this command, so we copy it. And then we need to use it like this, the old carousel. We need to include the CSS from it. And then we need to call it like this. And then these each item going to be the slide options and then we can configure it uh, there uh, this is the these are the options that we need to configure so we can do that so let's do it first of all so here are the configuration that we need to deal with so what we do first of all we need to install the package the right component it's it's the projects and the old carousel basically working for the testimonials. So what we need to do is uh, remove from here. So we have projects here extracted already. So I'm just gonna save it. We will come back to it uh, later. And in the testimonials, we need to go to the site. And this is the carousel that we need to make it work. So on page, it's the same issue exactly. So on page refresh, we have it and it works. If I go to service and I go back to testimonials, you see it's not coming. It's the exactly the similar stuff. So what we need to do here is that testimonial is here, so we can cut it. And in here inside component we say testimonial slider dot gsx. All right, and then we can put it here. Now, this testimonial, we can search it on the, we can call it here first of all. Testimonial slider. And in the home page, it should be there as well, so we can call it there. So here, projects and then testimonial right here. So we do all this. Testimonial slider, save it. 
All right, now it's quite dynamic so that page. Now it's okay if I get the home page. And yeah, here it is. You can see it's not working because the slider changed, but if I refresh it, it will be working. So yeah, now it is here. Okay, so first correct this. So testimonial, slider, so we create this and new slider. And as we need to go back to that documentation here, old carousel, copy this, come back here, paste it. And then this is slider ultimately, so we need to find the slides. So here is the item, uh, testimonial item. So this is the first item, this is the second item. And this is the third item. So slider has three slides. So these are the, those three slides. So let's go back to documentation. We need to put this, all right? So we copy it. And I'm gonna put it here. Inside it, I'm going to put these items just to see how it is working. So go back, paste here. Go to browser, let's go to testimonials. So you have here, yeah, you can see the slides are there. Now what I do, uh, you're gonna copy one of these and I'm gonna paste it here. Let's see if it works or not. So, so we have adders there. So instead of testimonials item, I change the class and here we have class, so it should be named. And here the class is all item, change it to item. And let's see if it works. Seems like something happened, but not exactly. So we need to have three items here. So I do, I copy all three. And go here and paste it. Testimonial item becomes item. From here. From here, I don't know about this. Okay, what I do is I search for this class and I change it to item. Simple as this, as simple as that. Save it. All right, looks all right to me. Now we need buttons, those two buttons. So if I refresh, yeah, we have these two buttons here. Here those buttons are missing and it is autoplay. We need to make autoplay. Here items are three, we need to make, uh, we need to configure it. So let's do it. I go to here. We can go to GitHub. Actually, there was some configuration. If you scroll down, so there is items. So we can tell how many items we want. We want two items. So we can put here items equals two. All right. So yeah, now it is the same width. We also got these. So the styling is not correct. So because we only need one slider here, I put. What we got so here autoplay first thing and i'm gonna copy this piece here is equal to there's probably true so autoplay is true dots false we don't want dots so the format changes like this all right then we have uh, smart speed thousand And then we have margin 25. Then we have loop true. The true is loop already there. Nav true, nav is already there. So we don't need to do these. We have nav text. Let's try to add it. Let's put it like this. It lost responsive, so I'm just gonna cut it. 
and this is what it looks like. Nice. Again, this doesn't look as sparking, so I'm gonna comment this portion. And margin. Okay, margin is given that way right there, so. Save it, formatted, so go back and see. All right. Now I made a mistake. We need to check the class of CSS was applied to this one. So for that, we can go to the HTML file of it, testimonial HTML. And our slider is where? It's here. So which item? Testimonial item. Let's see. It is, I think, maybe, uh, no. All right, the best way to find the exact styling, we can go to original theme. Here, here when we inspect this, we have the styling applied to it. So inspect. So here it is, style.css, where this uh, styling is. So if I look for this class, I find it, go to the Visual Studio, search for it here. Here is the style file, and here is the styling. So it is looking for, if I remove the parent classes here, just to see if it works directly on the main class. So let's see how it works, so if I delete this, save. Go to our application. Yeah, there is something, it's not exactly the same, but you get the point here. Now there is testimony item, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove all the CSS where parent is applied, so you just want to remove that. So we will have directly to our elements. And here, whatever our is testing all the items, because we are using items, so we will call it item instead of testimonial item. Now, in here, it is not, it is Dave, you can see here. So the best solution will be, because we have border radius, we can put as not important so that the button, uh, whatever the style of button, which is conflicting, it is not gonna work. And uh, now it should be fine. So if I go back here, and see here, it looks fine. Now that is something needs to stay, and on hover it should get clean. So, so here, if you notice, uh, Basically, the background is primary. Again, here's the conflict of the class. So we can click here, get the color code, and we can go in our style. Here, when we are hovering instead of primary, I'm gonna pass the color character. So it should fix it. Let's see if it does. So if I go here, on hover, here it shows that, but I don't think. Because we're using Bootstrap as well, which can conflict. And it is not making it work, so we can check like this. And nope. Alright, so I made a few changes here. Now I gave the colors directly instead of picking for primary because that conflicts with the Bootstrap we are using. So we are now, it's less just fine, so we have the errors. And on hover, it gets green. So if you want to change it, that's to you. Now we can out, go to home, and you will see that it is coming. You go to testimonial directly, and here it is. All right, so the last thing is the projects here. So this is not working on click on refresh, it's working, so let's fix this now. So, yeah, now if I go to main.js.
so the file this is for all your section and I'm gonna click add class under new class already extracted all the data in projects file and we are already calling the projects uh, component so that part is done now what we need to do here first of all I'm going to comment this carousel because we don't need it anymore now here is the code which is responsible for uh, the project section and the ISO top is the package that is working on it so what we can do simply we can command this as well so I'm going to command this out now we need to look for a package so if we go to npm and here we need to search for a package name ISO top and uh, I think it's ISO top layout yeah this is the one so what we need to do, we need to install it, npm install ISO top layout. So I'm going to do that. All right, so it is installed. I start the npm start again. OK, so click on the service, then project. And I click any of these. It's not working currently, so as we install the package, we don't need this anymore. So we go to projects here. We need to use um, use effect. So I'm going to call that use effect. And it should be in. All right. And here, use effect. And here, we need to run uh, the similar code. Code. So on this code um, here, if you notice, let me re-enable it. Here we are instantiating the ISO top class. We are passing the uh, class name here and layout type. And then we are saying when we click on the button, it is going to put a class, uh, remove the class active. And we are going to put an add class active on the particular button. So here on these buttons, when you click, this one will have active class and any other class where active is not removed that what this code says and here we say that portfolio ISO instantiated again so on click what happens is it reinstantiated and that this list gets changed now what I'm gonna do I have the similar code I made it in JavaScript so I'm gonna copy and paste and explain it to you so what we're we gonna do we're gonna save this from here go in projects.jsx inside the use effect we're gonna put this all right so here uh, import and you need to say ISO top when you hit it, it is going to import automatically. Um, the now, once we have it, we can use this class. So, we instantiate the class, we pass the same parameters here, and uh, then after that, here we are selecting each portfolio item and we are putting a filter. And here we are saying on click for each the same thing we are removing class active, and for the current element, we are adding class active, and after that, we are running. Uh, re arranging all the items. Let's see if it works. So if, what we do, we go back here, projects, and a click, and it goes like refresh. Okay, there is some styling issue we have. That is, if I go to main.js, the add layout. We have it here. Filter. We are getting the each item then add click then we run a function then for each i'm removing and then i'm adding the class here this portion is fine then we have uh, well what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put a message inside use effect in a timeout because the uh, the jsx is not there already so we need to put it under some kind of wait so i'll give it a two seconds wait and then let's see if it works. Let's save it. Now let's go back here. Service. Projects. No, it looks alright. Uh, refresh. Yeah, now it is okay. Now it's working just fine. So if I go back to service again. And then project. Now the styling is all, all good. So yeah, it's, it's all working now. So our template is. So 
here it is also and scroll top and yeah all is good so the files will be uh, provided so you can download the file for the react application as well as the html and yes thank you for watching this video uh, subscribe to the channel if you for the future videos and see you in the next one